juz of the Qur'an comprises the ending of Surah Zumar, speaking of the different groups to be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for justice and accountability. Then Surah Al-Ghafir on the forgiving nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, Surah Fussilat that reminds us of our responsibility as a believer and the quality of istiqama and steadfastness. From all of the ajza of the Qur'an, one unique characteristic of the 24th juz is when you take the different verses and then you piece them together and you rearrange them, a very vivid image emerges of the journey of the soul, the journey of the ruh from its inception to its being in this world and ultimately to the afterlife. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in Surah Al-Ghafir that each and every one of us began as just a drop of dirty fluid. And then from that dirty fluid, we grew into an embryo. And then we grew bones and then flesh. And then eventually our mothers conceived us we came into this world. So Allah reminds us, first and foremost, as He speaks about in another verse, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شِئًا مَذْكُرًا That the first point, that every human being, regardless of how important they are, how wealthy they are, how big of a civilization they are, president or janitor, general or teacher, whoever, whatever you are, remember, at some point you were nothing. You never existed. And then as this drop of dirty fluid grows and grows and grows and you're born as a child, you go through the vicissitudes of life, now challenges begin to come. So the first thing Allah tells us in Surah Al-Ghafir is the steps we go in our creation. And then as we're going through life's challenges, we're presented with different options. We have Iman, we have Islam, then there's Kufr, there's disbelief. I have to follow Allah and His Messenger, but I can also be very sinful. So Allah says, As you go through this life, the most important quality you can have is istiqama on your faith. But for whatever reason, if you don't have istiqama, and you falter and you fall short, Allah then has a verse for us. In Surah, in Surah Al-Zumar, Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ You go to college, you go to high school, you have work, you make certain decisions in life that are very unhealthy for your faith. Allah says, never be despondent of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا You're insan. You're meant to falter, you're meant to slip, you're meant to make a mistake. But turn to me because I'm going to forgive you. But those of us who choose not to take a good route, we take a route of oppression, of lying, of cheating, of stealing, of backbiting, of fighting, of arguing, of wickedness. Allah says, these people will have a very painful death. And now, Allah, subhanAllah, in Surah Al-Ghafir, He mentions that the trumpets will be blown and every breathing soul will now have their souls extracted. You start off as a drop of fluid, you go through the challenges of life, good or bad, eventually you pass away, and then when Allah tells the angel to blow the trumpet, everyone is silent. Everyone is six feet under. And then Allah alone, the only creator, the only sovereign, the only king, and the only true owner will say, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Oh, all of the Fir'auns of this world, all of the Hamans and all of the Qarun, all of the oppressors, all of the usurpers, where's all of your wealth? لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Today, when you can't even move your lips, when you're in the ground buried, as insects are munching and biting on your body, where's all of your strength? Where's your army? Where's your superpower? Where's all of... Where's all of the support that you have? 
لمن الملك اليوم then Allah says لله الواحد القهار Allah alone has true power and then subhanallah the trumpet will be blown again and every individual will rise from their graves and as we learn in Surah Yasin that was recited the previous time that everyone's going to wake up and say من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا it's like you woke up from a sleep. This morning when we woke up for Fajr, it's like you wake up from a sleep and you're thinking, oh, it's Fajr time, I have to move. People will rise from their graves and they'll say, Man min marqadina hadha. I'm going to get up from my grave and I'm going to wonder, I was resting, what happened now? And one by one, we're going to see everyone rise from their graves and the call will be made. You may not understand it and you're going to be moving. Everyone's going to be moving to the mahshar. Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, Will we have clothes? Nabi Sallallahu will say no. The women? And Nabi Sallallahu will say no. And Aisha said, wouldn't people get a little shy and see women without clothes, men without clothes? Rasulullah Sallallahu says, on that day, looking at someone else is going to be the last concern on their mind. Even if a horde of naked people are going to walk in front of them, they're going to be so concerned with their own sins and their own shortcomings their own perspiration and their accountability that they're not even going to realize that all of this is happening around them. You ever notice somebody in a state of shock? When somebody's gone through trauma, you can put your hand in front of them and they won't even know what's happening. They're not blinking because their mind is completely zoned out. Nabi Sallallahu says, we're going to be walking and we're not going to realize anybody's there even though billions and billions of people are going to be walking towards the mahshar. And then the accountability is going to begin. And then subhanallah, in Surah Zumar, as the finale, as the ultimate conclusion, Allah describes so beautifully the two groups. And from this comes the name of the Surah, Surah Zumar. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all of creation will be divided into two groups. Group one are those who will be dragged by their feet to Jahannam. And as they're being dragged, the gates of Jahannam are closed. They can hear the screams, the agony, the punishment and pain from outside of the gate, from miles and miles away. And as they're being brought, they're struck with fear. And Allah says, حَتَّى إِذَا فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ And then Allah will say to all of these people, did Allah not give you an opportunity to bring Iman, to believe in the message? And then, as Allah says in another verse, they're going to start arguing. The people who are weak, they're going to say, Ya Allah, the people who are influential, they made me do this. Then the influential people are going to say, Ya Allah, we never forced them to do it. They're going to say, they never forced us, but they constantly told us to do wrong. They were constantly spreading propaganda and we followed it. Allah will say, listen, if you want to argue, go argue in Jahannam. This is not a time to argue for you anymore. When you were alive was the time for your argumentation. That time is gone. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell us, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا And then there are those who believe in Allah. Those who sacrificed. Those who stayed up at night. Those who gave in charity. Those who bit their ego so that they don't argue with others. Those that were patient and when sin and haram tempted them, they moved away. Those who had the choice of doing haram but chose to do halal, they did everything right in their capacity. Allah says, like VIP, like royalty, the angels will come to each of them and start taking them toward the gates of Jannah. Just like a person who comes in a private jet and you see soldiers waiting for them and the red carpet is laid before them and they're walking and everyone is saluting them, every person is going to be walking, ushered in with angels towards the gates of Jannah. And Allah says, the beauty of Jannah is such, you don't have to wait for the gates to open. From miles and miles away, you can already smell the fragrance of Jannah. Just like sometimes when you're walking, after doing Umrah and you pass by, and you know the gates of the hotel opens, and you smell that draft of mask and that draft of perfume it's refreshing it's cold Allah says the doors of Jannah will be open and one by one people will be in such amazement their jaws will drop 
they will be frozen in time just taking in all of the bliss that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised them. And in that moment, as people are in front of the gates of Jahannam and the group of people are in front of the gates of Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, everyone pay attention. So their eyes will completely drift away from either Jahannam and Jannah. Allah will bring an animal, a ram, and will tell everyone, this is mouth, this is death. And then he will tell the angel to slaughter the animal. And he will say, after today, there is no mouth. After today, if you are in agony, there's no end to your agony. And if you are in bliss, your bliss is limitless. And then we will be entered into Jannah and some will be entered into Jahannam. Their torment will begin. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bliss, forgiveness, and the pleasure of Jannah will begin as well. The 24th juz, subhanallah, is such a beautiful description of the travel and the journey of this fluid that each and every one of us, we were at some point, mimma immaheen, Allah says, a dirty drop of fluid that becomes a child, that becomes an adult, that makes choices in their life, that is then met with the angel of death, then passes away and Allah makes the announcement of who owns sovereignty, going to the mahshar and ultimately accountability, then Jannah or Jahannam. It's a very powerful description and a reminder that إِنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ Our life is a very short time of amusement and play and وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ That the afterlife is truly what is life. This life is a dream and true life is the afterlife. And to end, as the ulama would say, النَّاسُ نِيَامُ وَإِذَا مَاتُوا إِنْتَبَهُ Even though our eyes are open right now, each and every one of us are in fact sleepwalking. When our eyes close and Allah takes us for accountability, in tabahu, now we're awake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah make us among the people who will be escorted to Jannah. May we not even have to experience for a moment those who are dragged to Jahannam. May we have istiqama and may Allah grant us eternity in Jannatul Firdaus, our families, our parents, and all of our loved ones. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakumullah khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.